what crime did Mechelen commit? Well, it's a vague question. Um, I can go into the details on how I came about speaking with him and what I saw when I walked when I pulled up, if you'd like. I'm asking you to simply name a crime that my client committed. I had reasonable suspicion to speak with him, sir. It's not as simple as what crime was committed. What was a crime committed? I had reasonable suspicion to speak with him at the time. So you're not going to answer this question, are you? It's not as simple as what crime was committed, sir. I didn't write the citation. I said I had reasonable suspicion to go up and speak with him. I can tell you what I saw and what I did. We're going to get into all that. Okay. But before we get into that, I'd like you to tell me if my client committed a crime. Well, on face value, no, I didn't. He did not commit a crime. Right. He was issued a ticket for a crime, right? Correct. Punishable by jail time. You know that? Yes. He could have gone to jail. He could have lost his liberty for 90 days. You know that? Yes. And you know that he was written that ticket, don't you? I was told after the fact, yes. You didn't know at the time that he was written a ticket? I was, at the time that I was pulling, it was the start of my shift. I was advised after I came into my roll call at 3 o'clock what citation he was written. At the time on scene, was there any conversation about anybody there knowing who my client was? Uh, I believe once we ID'd him, yes, we realized who he was. And, and who, who was he? How did you know who he was? I was told that he had sued the department before. Who told you that? Chief Settles. Did he tell you whether or not my client won or lost that lawsuit? I don't recall. Okay. But he mentioned to you on scene that my client had sued the police department before. Well, I don't know if it was those exact words, but the conversation did come up. Okay. Yes. And during that conversation, he conveyed to you the information that my client had sued the department before, right? If it wasn't the word sued, it was I, I understood what had happened, yes. Okay. Can you think of any reason at all that that would be pertinent information? Uh, we just, we as officers, we do speak about past run-ins we've had with people, yes. I mean, it's just something we do so we're aware of the person that we're dealing with. Just the same thing if we're dealing with somebody aggressive, we speak about an aggressive matter we had in the past, just so we know how somebody may react. Okay. Now, videoing people, that's not aggressive, is it? No, sir. It's not a crime, is it? No, not from, it depends on the circumstances. Tell me, I'm sorry? It just depends on the circumstances. Tell me a circumstance in which somebody can stand in, be standing in public, videoing, and it being a crime. Uh -huh. I guess it would depend on if somehow we can prove that there's some form of harassment or invading somebody's space or somebody's privacy in some form. Okay, so give me an example of, of how it would be a crime for invading somebody's privacy. I believe in a, it's a gray area. I couldn't, I don't know specifics, but I know if you're recording from a public area and you're recording inside of somebody's home with a window open, I know it can get kind of, kind of hairy. You sure? No, not exactly. Okay. But I know that we've, we get those kinds of calls and you know, it's kind of a gray area that we usually let the prosecutor determine on whether or not it's a crime. You don't know if it's a crime or not? To be honest with you, sir, no. You wrote a report, didn't you? I did. You answered interrogatories, didn't you? Yes, sir. Okay. Was my client trying to gain access to a secured area? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, you're not just answering that question with a simple no, so I'm going to ask you, why are you not sure? Because I don't know what his mindset was as he was approaching the police department, sir. Okay. So you think maybe he was trying to gain access to a secure area? I'm not going to make any assumptions. I'm not sure what his intentions were when he was walking to the police department. All right. So you're not sure if he was trying to gain access to a secured area? That is what I said, yes, sir. All righty. Can you think of any basis to say that he was trying to gain access to a secured area? He was approaching the area of a, of a secure area. Okay. And approaching a secured area means that uh, he's trying to gain access to a secured area? That's not what I said. I'm asking you. No. Again, I can't speak for what was going through his mind. All I can tell you is what he was doing. Right. I cannot speak for what he was intending to do when he walked up to the, to the secured area. Yeah, all right. Based on the totality of the circumstances, was he attempting to gain access to a secured area? We stopped him before he crossed. He, we stopped him as he was approaching our driveway. So again, I'm not sure. Did you hear what my question was? Repeat it, please. Okay. Based on the totality of the circumstances, was my client attempting to gain access to a secured area? 
we stopped him prior to he until he was he, we stopped him prior to him making the secured area so did you hear my question I don't know how else you want me to answer that okay. well I'm asking you I'm not asking you what he did or didn't do okay I'm asking you based on the totality of the circumstances was he attempting to gain access to a secured area yes ba no right based know. on the totality of the circumstances I do not know okay Based on the totality of the circumstances, was he trying to access information in a secured area? I'm not sure, sir. Okay. I'm going to hand you what's been marked as exhibit number five. And I'm turning to page number 11, which shows your answer to number 21 and 22. And I'd like you to take a look at that, and I'm going to hand you my highlighter. I want you to highlight any part of your answer to 21 and 22 that you know to be true. So if you're unsure if it's true or not, or if you think it's not true, don't do anything. But if you know it's true, highlight it. Okay? For 21 and 22. Thank you. Did you highlight anything? No. Okay. Since I want to be fair, I'm going to hand you my red marker, and I want you to highlight anything that you believe is true. I'm sorry, underline. Did I say underline or highlight? You said highlight, but I can underline. Okay, with that red marker, underline anything that you believe is true in the answer to 21 and 22. I'm just not sure. So the only thing you underlined was uh, the response number 22, the last sentence that says, you do not believe that my client's camera was searched. You yeah, all right. <clears throat> you are to report in this case? Yes, sir. I'm going to keep the one that's marked as an exhibit, and I'm going to hand you your report, which is... To. Oh, you have it. Excellent. Okay. I want to go through it, and I'm going to indicate for the record what portions of it I'm highlighting. <clears throat> Our report's supposed to be true and accurate. Yes. And they're supposed to be complete? Yes. Why is that? Just in case the incident goes to court. Things need to be, things need to be factual. Obviously, these are permanent documents. And uh, as, as a member of the general public, we want to know that if there's a police report written by an officer who has a badge and took an oath that we can rely on those statements to be true correct that's important isn't it yes for people to believe that police officers are going to be truthful in their reports yes okay now i want you to look at the contact with officer norris i'm sorry officer norris contact i'm sorry that's offender okay Contact with offender Norris. It's right. OF slash. Yeah, well, I write abbreviations. So okay, no, that, that's fine. That just it took me a second. I didn't have enough coffee yet this morning. I was too busy racing over here so that I could be late for the depositions. Um, now, you see over here that you wrote in your report Chief Settles then attempted to check the waistband of Norris for weapons. Yes. I'm going to highlight that portion. Okay. I'm highlighting Chief Settles then attempted to check the waistband of Norris for weapons. And I'm, I want to ask you, in order for an officer to put their hands on a person, do they have to have a legal basis to do so? Reasonable suspicion based on the Terry Stop Law, yes sir. Okay. And, Terry Pat Down. Okay, Terry Pat Down. Now, if I understand Terry correctly, there has to be reasonable suspicion that crime is afoot. Of a crime. Right? Okay. What crime? Was there reasonable suspicion to believe my client had committed? Based on what I saw? Yes. So, as you can read in my report, um, I was traveling eastbound on Bivens. What crime was the question? Not I, the factual I, I, basis. I cannot be that. It, it's not that simple of a question and answer, sir. But, but what crime? Everything, our job is based on what we have in front of us, and then we make a decision based on those facts. Okay, I can't just specifically tell you what crime. It's not, I don't have to prove that there was a crime. I have to have reasonable suspicion. Not say that there was a crime. I have to have reasonable sus suspicion to be able to have it, to be able to conduct a Terry pat down. So it's not as simple as saying what crime was committed. You obviously know the law. How long have you been a police officer? A little over three years. Okay, you obviously know the law. So, th and this actually happened I was uh, fairly a year new. and a half ago. I was fairly new yesterday. Okay. Um, it's just not as simple as a... You, you said the law correctly, but what I'm asking you is, what, I'll give you a chance to say the facts, I promise. Okay. But first, I want to ask you... I believe at that time, there was a parking violation. An illegally parked vehicle I thought your client was coming from. Okay. What basis did you have to believe that that was my client's vehicle? 
because there was one sole vehicle parked on the corner of Vivens and Olive. He was the sole person in that area that I observed. He walked as I pulled in eastbound on Bivens. He was the sole person walking eastbound as I was driving eastbound, coming from that sole vehicle. There was no other persons in that area that I saw, sir. No. Parking is a uh, crime in Romulus? It is a, it is an MCL code, correct. It's, so that's. It's an arrestable offense? It's a reasonable, we are just like a traffic violation, so we're allowed to ID people. We're allowed to ID them based on infractions. Yes. Based on a car being parked illegally? Based on any type of civil infraction. Now, if a car is parked illegally, don't you just issue a ticket to the car? No, it's not that simple. Okay. If we I've are got able lots to park a ticket, if so we are able, not my name is never on it, just my car. If we're able to, we don't just we don't just write parking tickets. Oh, based on doesn't it. do that. We thing. do, we oh, do, but okay. we don't have to. If we have the opportunity to ID the person that we believe is driving that vehicle, then we will. Why write a person a ticket if we don't believe that they were driving? I understand. So you believed at this point in time that the reasonable suspicion of the crime was for the crime of parking his car illegally. The reasonable suspicion to approach him and attempt to ID him was to was based on that illegally parked vehicle, yes. Okay. And now you said it was on the corner of Olive and Bibbins, right? Yes, sir. Were there any other cars parked on the street there? Not in that area, no, sir. There were on the, would be the south side of Olive. So on the south side of Bibbins on Olive Street. So on the same street, just across the street? Yeah, but it was across an intersection. How many other cars were parked on the street? I'm not sure. So there was construction going on at that time. Any reason to believe that that car was my client's and not one of the other cars parked? Not at that time, sir. There was, I seen no other persons on the road at that time. I had no other reason to believe that it was anybody besides your clients. Were there any houses there? There's plenty of houses, but not where he was parked. He was parked in front of the police station. Well, the vehicle was parked vehicle. in front of the police station. The vehicle wasn't near any houses? It was on the opposite side of the street. So it was parked on the side of the street where our police department is located. And there's no, no houses between Olive and probably 50 yards. Okay. This is Olive and Bivens? Yes, sir. How do you spell Bivens? B-I-B-B-I-N-S. Unfortunately, I meant to work yesterday, but I was even advised that there was a, uh, there was a fire hydrant in the area. But again, that wasn't even my concern at the time. You didn't know that at the time, did you? I still don't know exactly where you went. But it was parked just the wrong way. Correct side of the road, just facing the wrong way. Is there some ordinance in Romulus that you have to only be parked if it's in a parking spot like this on the street? They still have to be on the right side. To be honest with you, I mean, it's Michigan law that states that your wheels have to be to the curb, your passenger wheels have to be to the curb, or some form of wording. Like that. Even if you're in a park in a real parking spot, so you're not parked on the street. You're actually parked in a parking spot. Well, that's that is on the street though. Right. This is a parking spot also. It's not a private area. It's a. It's I didn't on say the that. It's a parking spot. Right. I'm not sure if it's marked as a parking spot, sir. Okay. So just so I understand this, when you first approached him, it was, be, it was in be, person, like on foot? No, 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 I'm trying to figure out, yes, the okay. basis for Settles to put his hands on my client, to check his waistband. I cannot speak for Chief Settles, sir. I'm asking you what you observed. The crime that you observed that gave Settles the right to do that, as far as you know, was this illegally parked car. Is that um, right? Objective form and foundation. Or was there another crime? You're asking me of what, based on what Chief Sell did, what Chief Sell's actions were, what my observations were? Yes. I can only speak for myself. I can't tell speak them, for yourself. Yeah. I, I, the only I, crime I, that you had reasonable suspicion was that there was an illegally parked vehicle, yes, sir, in front of the police department. I believe it's in Article 2. Yeah, it is. Um, you attempted to check him for weapons, right? You know, I see, an, an, this is unfortunate. Um, I don't know if it was a typo here, but I don't recall actually reaching for his waistband. Okay. Well, what it says here is that Chief Settles then attempted to check the waistband of Norris for weapons. And line later, and I'm highlighting this part, Officer Reyna attempted to check him for weapons. Is that true?
Well, let's, Are you saying let's read it correctly. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. When, um, okay. Yeah, because I don't remember. When that. Chief settles, Officer Reyna. Okay. All it right. appears there's a typo yeah, of some there, kind. Yeah, there's believe. definitely a typo. Yeah. Okay, so it says over here, Chief settles, Officer Reyna attempted to check him for weapons, yeah. and I'm highlighting Chief yeah. settles also. And unfortunately, so I'll be honest with you, I don't recall patting him down. That's why I'm not sure if I attempted to make... If I made an error here, or what happened. I don't recall actually reaching for his waistband. Okay. Is there any basis whatsoever to believe that that illegally parked car was my client's? Asked an answer. You can answer it again. Yes, sir. He was the sole person walking from the sole vehicle from the area that I came from. Okay. Uh, is it possible that somebody parked the car? and then went into the police station. Sir, anything's possible. Okay. Is it more likely that that that, uh, that it was my client's car? It's not like it's not more likely either way, sir. So anybody who would have been walking there, there would be reasonable suspicion to believe that they were committing a crime if they were that car was parked illegally, right? If there was a group of people, probably not. Why but not? being there was a sole individual, yes. The probability of that person being the driver of that vehicle is higher than it being a group or another individual, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the statute that my client, you have reasonable, to, reasonable suspicion to believe my client was violating with that car? To be specific, it's a form of a parking violation, sir. I'm not exactly sure the MCL code or the civil infraction that it would entail. You're not going to do anything like that. Oh. At what point in time did my client commit the crime of loitering or uh, disorderly conduct? Sir, I, so, again, it's not a simple answer for me, sir. Okay. Why don't you just tell me at what point in time it is that my client committed that crime? I, if you know. I, I, I don't know, sir. Okay. But you know he committed that crime at some point. I do right? not. Did he commit that crime at some point? I'm not sure. Okay. Why are you not sure? What could I do to help you? Be There's sure. nothing you can do, sir, because there would, the incident continued after I went in for my roll call. Okay. So, so I cannot speak to those officers, speak for those officers. But from what you observed, my client had not committed the crime of disorderly or loitering, right? Until when I walked away, at the point that I walked away, and again, the incident continued. Right. I did not see any acts of disorderly. Okay. But again, I cannot speak to those officers that stayed on scene. You grabbed my client's arms? I believe that was singular arm. If you look at the uh, paragraph that begins, Norris continued to refuse to give officers his identification. Okay, well, it says Officer and Chief settles, so there was two of us that grabbed Norris's arm, so it would have been one and my So you, okay, and I'm going to highlight Officer Reyna and Chief settles, then grab Norris's arms. Yes. Okay, and so you each grabbed one arm? I believe so, yes. And the basis of, of grabbing his arm was what, again? Uh, it would have been, at that point, the reasonable suspicion that conducted, that resulted in the Terry Pat down, based on the illegal park vehicle, your client not giving us his identification, when we were at that time going to present him a civil infraction because we believed it was his vehicle. Because he would not answer our, answer our questions on whether or not it was or was not his vehicle. So it was as simple as just IDing him at that point so we could write him a civil infraction. So just so I'm clear about this, the entire basis for there being any contact with you and Settles and my client was this illegally parked car? No. Okay, what else was there? Oh, I mean, it brought, he came to my attention just based on him video recording my personal vehicle. Okay. But that, I'm not saying that was the reason why I went and spoke with him, but I'm also not saying, because I'm on video, saying I didn't appreciate him recording my personal video. So I don't want you to assume that was the only reason was the illegally part. There were two. But the only reason why I had, I was legally able to sit and talk to him and have reasonable suspicion, reasonable suspicion to be able to conduct a Terry Pat down with my chief was because of the illegally parked vehicle. Okay, gotcha. So the only legal basis was the illegally parked car, but in reality, the reason that you guys approached him and made contact with him no. was the illegally parked car and the video. I mean, I, 
there were two reasons why we went and approached him and spoke with him. Yes. What are the two reasons? I just told you. The for, videoing? Verbatim. The videoing and the yes. uh, illegally parked yes. car. Because okay. if, if I may continue. Please. Uh, just based on the time that this occurred, unfortunately there was a lot, a lot of officers being killed. So it was a time of kind of uh, extreme awareness as officers. So we see a person that's not acting, unfor I don't want to use the word normal, but just acting. Recording a police department at that time wasn't normal to myself. So it did raise some concern. And my, my chief obviously being concerned for myself too. Getting a, my personal vehicle on a personal recording to me is alarming to myself and to my family if somebody is able to figure out where I live. Now that is also constitutionally protected conduct. You are correct, that? absolutely. So just so we're abundantly clear about this. And I just wanted you to make aware of what the, my reasons for even being concerned about the video. I understand process. your reasons. Um, but just so we're very clear about this. The reason that you made contact and made physical contact with my client was twofold. The illegally parked car and the video recording, right? Well, the reason why I was able to make, that's not true. Not the, the legal reason. No, the physical the reason. physical contact reason why I was able to, to touch your client was solely because of the illegally parked car. Right. And I'm not asking about the legal reason. But that's that's your my answer to your reason. question. No, nope, that's not. That is, that is the answer to your question. I'm allowed to speak with anybody I want out there. And if they tell me that they don't want to talk to me and they don't want to ID themselves, that's perfectly fine. It happens to me every day. But the legal reason why I was able to pursue what I was doing was because of the illegally parked car. And uh, when is it that you first learned that my client had sued the department? Is it I already answered your question, sir. I know, I forgot, so why don't you tell me again? On, on scene, I was made aware of some form of an incident that he had with the police department. Again, I can't remember if the word sued was said, but I was made aware that there was an incident. As soon as I heard his name, I, I grew up in the city, so I was aware of him prior to even becoming a police officer. Okay. I'm sorry, I was made aware of your client prior to becoming a police officer. Let me make sure I understand this. If I walk past an illegally parked car and I'm the only person there, you now have reasonable suspicion to detain me? I have the right to speak with you and ask if that's your vehicle. A Terry stop. It's not as simple as what you're asking me. There's I'm asking you a very simple question. If I walk past an illegally parked car and I'm the only person in the vicinity walking around, do you have reasonable suspicion to conduct a Terry stop, yes or no? Objective form. Again, it would depend on the circumstances, sir. It's not a, sim me, it's not a, simple, it's not a simple answer okay. question. Tell me a circumstance in which it is no problem. When somebody's parked illegally on the corner of Olive and Bibbins and they are the sole person walking with a video camera towards the police department and there is no other person, no other vehicle in the area and they approach me from that exact area of the vehicle, sir. How far away was he from this vehicle? At the time that I pulled up to go on duty, feet, within probably 10 to 15 feet, it was almost directly in front of it when I approached. If I'm not mistaken, in his deposition, he even said that he was, prior to make approaching myself and, my, and the chief, he was in front of our police department recording the police department, which was the area of where that vehicle was parked. I just want to be clear about this. Sure. What gave you reasonable suspicion that this was his vehicle? Was that it was parked and that he was the only person you could see walking around, right? Because it was the sole vehicle and he was the only single person in that area coming from the direction of that vehicle, yes. Well, is that people? Is that where people typically park when they have business inside the police department? Absolutely not. Where do people park when they have business in the police department? Where our door is, which is further north of that, about another 25 to 30 feet north. Okay, there's a row of parking spots there, right? Yes, and it was wide open. Okay. There was no, there, he had plenty of other areas that were obviously marked. And again, if I'm not mistaken, it's not marked. There were plenty of other spots where he could have parked that was that were directly in front of the police department. He went in directly into our police station after the incident, so he knows where those parking spots are. Right. But I'm just trying to figure out what you knew at the time. And at the time, you obviously claimed to have reasonable suspicion that he was parked illegally. 
Yes, sir. So when you approached him, was that the first thing you guys asked him about the vehicle? No, my chief spoke for the first time. And what did he start asking him about? Uh, just who he was, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah, this was a year and a half ago. I'm not going to remember specifics on Burbage, sir. Go ahead. No, I'm. What do you, you go ahead. What do you want to say, sir? You asked me. What do you want to say? And what do you want to say? Well, he's trying to say it, Solomon. Will you wait Instead a second and let him say it? Instead of telling me, I'm not letting it? you answer. Why don't you go ahead and answer? Well, why don't you be question. quiet? Go ahead. Say what you want to say. Will you repeat your question for me, please? No. Oh, okay. All right. Whatever you want to say, you can say. All right. Anything? No. Not to say. Let's Is keep that watching. right? Yep. Well, we got an issue with you. I just standing up, taking video of. Okay, and then again, Chief Settle says, we got an issue with you taking video, right? Correct. Okay. Even though that's constitutionally protected conduct, right? Correct. Let's keep watching. By police officers and vehicles. Really? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So what's your name? You don't need to know. I, sir, I'm a police officer in the city. Okay. And you just got my personal car as I pull in here and my license. My license went out of Okay, then Settle asks him for his name, right? Uh, I missed it if you did. Okay. I believe you if you did, though. Okay. And then you said to my client, you just got my personal vehicle and my license, right? Correct. Okay. Why didn't you just tell him, you're illegally parked. Show me your ID. I'm allowed to speak with anybody. Right, but really you didn't think of that at the time, did you? It doesn't matter, sir. I'm allowed to speak with him if I'd like to. I, is that illegal? Okay, let's keep watching. We're at 127. You're touching me. Don't be touching me, man. Make sure you don't. And then he was touched by either you or Settles, right? He says, don't touch me. Right. After being told by Settles that he was being recorded, that he was recording police twice, and by you once, now he's being touched by police officers, right? Doesn't show that in the video, but he is saying that okay. he's and being it, touched. Yeah. And just so we're clear, the reason he was touched is not because of the video, it was because of the illegally parked car, right? I cannot Mr. speak for why Chief Settles touched your client. I can speak why I had reasonable suspicion to conduct a Terry pat down when I felt that it was necessary, sir. Okay. But as far as you know, the basis for him being touched right now? I cannot speak for Chief Settle, sir. Well, and I'm so going to object to him. foundation. Mr. Norris is saying, don't touch me. There's no evidence that he was actually touched. So he unless you specifically that. remember that, remember that he was touched, I, don't I would object to foundation. Speaks, yeah, specifically touching him, though. Was there a legal basis for you to touch him other than the illegally parked car? Or for myself? For him to be touched by any police officer? For myself? I can only speak for myself. Was there a legal basis for him to be touched by any police officer other than the illegally parked car? No, sir. Excellent. Let's keep watching. I have any weapons? I said don't touch me. I have no weapons. I have no weapons. Please stop. Please just, stop. Just relax. Excuse me. Just relax. I want to talk to you for a minute. That's fine. I don't want to talk to you. Well, you're going to have to talk to me. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not going to have to stop this. Stop. Stop, stop, stop walking, man. I, I don't want to stop. I told, he told you to stop, so stop walking. I, I don't care. Okay? Do you understand what police officers can do, man? We were asking no, you to yeah, stop walking, okay? Place. You can break That's the it. law is what you can do. Yeah. I'm asking you to lawful command to hang tight, man. I just want to see what you're doing. Just relax. It's okay? none of your business. Okay, now, it wasn't that you who just said it. I want you to hold tight so we can see what you're doing. Is that you who said that? Correct. Okay, we're paused at, at 2.44. What were you referring to, see what you're doing? Just curious on what he was doing up at the police department. Right, and you had previously referred to him video recording you, right? You are correct. Okay, is that what you were referring to when you said we want to see what you're doing? I don't remember what my mindset was at that time, sir. Okay. Um, 
you didn't say anything about an illegally parked car yet, right? In about 15 more seconds, I probably did. Right, but up until now, the only thing we've heard, we've had, your hand is on him now, isn't it? Correct. Okay, so your hand is on him right now, mm -hmm. and the only thing we've heard from you and from the chief is reference to his video, right? Correct. Okay, and now you're saying we want to see what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay. But again, this is all about an illegally parked car, right? Objective Farm and Foundation. Let's keep watching. Gang sign. That's yeah, what I see. Sign. Gang sign right there. It's a thin blue line for police officers that lost their lives That's on the line of duty. Sign, buddy. Police officers losing their lives on the line of duty. People. It's a gang sign? Gang sign. Is that your vehicle over there? Yeah, it is. All right. Is that your vehicle over there? Yeah, that is. You said, yeah, that no, is, right? No, he said, is that his vehicle over there? And I said, yes, that is. Right. You didn't know if it was his vehicle, did you? I had already explained to you why I believed it was his, sir. But like you, four times. Right, right. You didn't say, I believe that's his vehicle. You said, yeah, that is. Yes. Because sometimes when police officers want to detain somebody, but there's no basis to do it, like, for example, if he just called the thin blue line a gang sign, you got to look around for a reason to do it, right? No. You got to try to come up with something that gives you a lawful basis to stop it, right? Not myself. No? No. Nope. You weren't just trying to look for something desperately to be able to detain this man, to ID him because he was videoing you? Not and why I became don't a police interrupt officer. Me. Don't interrupt me. Not why I became don't a police officer. Don't interrupt me. Let me finish the question. You weren't just looking around for a reason to detain him and ID him because he was videoing you, videoed your personal car, and called the thin blue line a gang sign? No, sir. Okay, let's keep watching. Yeah. You know he parked on this wrong side of the road. So I need to see a driver license registration. Okay, and now we're at 308 into the video, and now Subtle says, you're parked on the wrong side of the road. Now I need to see your identification, right? Correct. Okay, so now, again, and I understand that you're now telling us that this was really all about an illegally parked car, but to somebody who watches this and is using common sense, doesn't it appear that this whole situation is really about him videoing. I can't speak for anybody else. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that what was happening here? The reason you approached him and made first contact with him and put your hands on him was because he was videoing? The reason why I approached him were for two separate reasons. Or one was to just speak with him on why he was video recording and then when I realized that there was an illegally parked vehicle, that was the reason why we conducted Terry Pat down because we had reasonable suspicion because of the illegally parked vehicle. When did you notice the illegally parked vehicle? As soon as I approached the police department traveling eastbound on Bivens from Goddard. So you pulled into the police into the police station. You saw him, yes, and you saw the parked car, yes, and then you pulled in. And then how far? How long after that did you walk out and make contact with him? A minute, if if not less. All right. So um, so the reason for the contact that you had with him, at least in part, was the fact that he was videoing. Right. Strictly to speak with them as part of the reason, yes. Again, we are allowed to speak with anybody we'd like for whatever okay. reason, sir. What and if they don't want to speak with us, they don't have to. What about the reason that he was touched? I had already explained to you about the vehicle, sir. No, no, no. But what I'm asking you is, at least in part, part of the reason that you made it's because of the illegal, illegal don't interrupt vehicle. Me. You asked me a question. I'm don't answering. interrupt me. You asked me a question. You need to stop interrupting me. Okay. 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 Part of the reason that you made physical contact with my client was because he was videoing, right? No. Your testimony is, even though Settles refers to the video twice, you refer to the video, and then you say, we need to know what you're doing, and then you make physical contact with him, and then and only then do you say a word about that illegally parked car. Your testimony is still that when you put your hands on my client, it was not even driven in part by the fact that he was videoing, right? Correct. Excellent. And that's what you're going to tell the jury? Yes. You're not going to come to court and change that? No. May I say something? No. Sure, say whatever no, you want. No, no, wait oh. for a question. Okay. What did you want to say? No, I'm okay. You can say it. I'm okay. Because I don't want you to accuse me of stopping you. Your lawyer's stopping you. No, I'm okay. Okay. I want you to say whatever you were going to say. No, sir. What were you just going to say? I forgot. Oh. You wrote in your report, Exhibit 5, there were concerns of safety due to what Norris was recording, right? Personal safety, yes, sir. Right. I'm highlighting that line as well. Even though we established that that action was constitutionally protected. 
You then say officer safety is one of the biggest concerns in RPD. I'm highlighting that as well. And I'm just wondering if, if this whole investigation centered around an illegally parked car, why is it that your report refers in great detail to the constitutionally protected conduct of his videoing and I think one line talks about this illegally parked car. Sorry, I speak of both matters. Okay, and is that because the physical contact you made with him was driven at least in part by his videoing? Ask and answer. Then why is it so all over your report? Why is your report just full of his recording if they had nothing to do with it? Nothing to do with the actual criminal charges, with the reason for the Terry stop. If, it, if, if, if you're telling us the truth today, under oath, that his constitutionally protected conduct was not a driving force at all to your physical contact with him, why is your report so full of it? I'm going to object to the form of the question. You've asked about six different questions okay. in there. I think you can answer that. I, I wrote my statement or my report to the facts, sir. I wrote to what happened. Why is your report so full of constitutionally protected conduct? It doesn't say it's a crime in the report, sir. What was he charged with? Uh, citation number R602902 for loitering and disorderly conduct and released on scene. Did you watch him commit that crime? I've already answered no, sir. Okay. Did he commit that crime? I'm not sure, sir. Okay. Did you at any time talk to the prosecutor? No. Okay. I, don't know. I asked you, did he commit this crime? You said you don't know. I do not. Sir. While you were present, did you watch him commit that crime? No, sir. Okay. Did you ever talk to the prosecutor about this case? Oh, sir. The prosecutor called one of the other officers. The detective. Right. Yes. She's a higher ranker, than, higher, never, higher ranking than me. Never talked to you? I don't even know who our prosecutor is. Are you afraid that Suttles is going to retaliate against you if you testify against him? Not the slightest bit, sir. Were you afraid on scene, as an officer who had been on the force for only a year and a half, that if you didn't go along with his investigation, that... Uh, it would somehow be used against you in your professional career. I'm sure. When you answered your interrogatories, did you uh, discuss them with your attorney? No. You just answered them on your own? I did. You wrote out your own answers? Correct. Are they the answers that I have in front of me? Uh, I would assume. I don't know. Well, I mean, there was a couple of interrogatories I asked you to highlight if you knew anything was true or if you believed anything was true. And you only highlighted one, and you only underlined one line. Do you remember that? Can I have a break, please? No, I didn't want to answer that question first. Re ask the question, please. Okay, the question is I asked you if the, your responses to interrogatory 21 and 22 were true, and then I asked you a follow up if you believe anything there is true, and there was only one line in both of those interrogatories that you believe is true, and that is I do not believe Plaintiff's camera was searched. I don't believe I wrote those answers. Okay. Are these answers true? I already answered that. Are they or are they not? I, on the ones, the one that I highlighted, I wrote that I, that I highlighted, I said I believed it was true. Okay. Well, you didn't highlight anything. I underlined with a highlighter. You underlined one sentence of those two responses. Correct. That's the only line in those two answers you believe to be true. Correct. You can take a break if you want. Thank you. I'm going to just ask you this question. I want you to be, just answer it however you want. Okay. What illegal activity did you suspect my client of committing? Parking his vehicle illegally. Thank you. I don't have anything further. All done. The time is the 11.59. That'll complete the presentation. What did you do, if anything, to prepare for today? I just uh, read my report that I completed following the citizen's death. You don't watch any videos? Correct, I did. You watch videos? Anything else? Uh, no. So just videos and read your report? Yes. Did you discuss anything with any of the defendants? Do not share any communications that you had with counsel present. Those are privileged. Okay. So you met with your attorney? Yes. Okay. And um, how long was that meeting? Uh, approximately an hour. <clears throat> and separate and apart from that, you reviewed your report in the video, or you did that during the, during that meeting? Did that during the meeting. Okay, gotcha. 
Um, so you know what we're here to talk about today, right? Yes. What crime did my client commit? Uh, disorderly conduct. And how did he commit disorderly conduct? His actions were, uh, they disturbed the peaceful nature of the neighborhood on that day in question. And how is it that they disturbed the peaceful, I'm sorry, the peace of the neighborhood? There were several people outside, construction workers, um, to name a few. And his actions when he was um, addressed by the Romulus Police Department, they were disorderly. He interfered with Detective Harkins entering the police station, among other things. Okay, there's three things that you just said I want to ask you about. You said his actions. What actions specifically uh, committed a crime? The specific actions that he did. Could you? I, I don't understand the question. But you said his actions, right? Remember you said that less than a minute ago? Yes. What actions? Uh, when he was, when we were addressing him, he was very evasive. He had identified who he was. He didn't want to do that. When I came out <coughs> and addressed him, at that point, I felt that he needed to be briefly detained. Uh, he did not make it easy for me to place handcuffs on him. Okay. He was evasive. He didn't identify himself. You briefly detained him, and he didn't make it easy for you to place handcuffs on him. Anything else? No. Okay. Let's talk about those one at a time. He was evasive. Is it illegal to be evasive when the police are asking you questions? No. Okay. Is it illegal to not identify yourself uh, when asked for identification? No. Okay. Is it illegal? Well, I guess those are his actions. The last one is uh, he didn't make it easy for you to place handcuffs on him. Now, do you know whether or not it's legal to resist an unlawful arrest? What do you mean? If I tried to arrest you right now, would you resist or would you let me put you in handcuffs? No, I would resist. Okay. But he wasn't under arrest. Okay. Well, okay, so let me ask you this. What if I was just trying to detain you by placing you in handcuffs? Would you resist or would you say, oh, since you're not arresting me, I won't resist? Okay. Well, I gave him a lawful order as a police officer. There we go. Okay, let's talk about that lawful order. And the lawful order was what? To place his hands behind his back. And it was lawful because you had a reasonable suspicion that he committed a crime. Is that right? Yes. Okay, and what crime was that? Disorderly conduct. Okay, and, and I asked you before, what was disorderly about him? And you said his actions. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. And then I asked you what actions? And you said he was evasive and, I didn't ident and he didn't identify himself. you remember that? Yes. And I asked you if either of those things were illegal and you said no. Do you remember that? Yes. What basis was there for you to put him in handcuffs if he did not do anything illegal? Okay. At that point, when I decided it was time for him to go into handcuffs, he was disorderly. Okay. How was he disorderly? What actions did he I do? I actually placed his hands behind his back so I could put handcuffs on him. He didn't do that. That is what was disorderly? Based on my experience and training, if I see a situation that's escalating, there's nothing wrong with briefly detaining someone to protect everyone at that scene. Okay, so situation... That was long water. All right, so you said situation escalating. But rather than use those terms, I want to point to specific actions that he did. Can we do that? Those are the terms that I just gave you. I know that. So now I'm going to ask you questions about his specific actions. Okay. Okay. You decided to detain him after he was evasive and refused to identify himself, right? Yes. What crime, at that point, did you suspect him of committing that it allowed you to briefly detain him? Well, well I'm going to object to the form and foundation. Okay, your objection is noted. I'd like an answer, please. Could you ask the question? Yes. Please? When he resisted, clearly that was disorderly in your opinion, right? When he resisted, it was disorderly in my opinion. Okay, now, prior to that, in order for somebody to resist, you have to, previous to that, make the decision to detain him. Is that right? I'm not understanding the way you're, you know, presenting okay. the question. Let's talk chronologically here. Okay. Okay. When you decided to detain, what came first? Your decision to detain him or his resistance? Could you ask the question again? What came first? Your decision to detain him or his resistance? My decision to detain him. Great. I want to know everything that went into that decision. What actions did he do that, in your opinion, gave you the legal right to detain him? What do you mean? 
Okay. In order for you, a police officer, to put somebody in handcuffs, or even not put them in handcuffs, but to detain them, what do you need lawfully? If I feel there is a safety issue there, that's enough in itself. If you subjectively believe that there's a safety issue, you get to detain somebody? I can place them in handcuffs, yes, and that's a part of detaining okay. them. If you feel that the way I'm dressed right now with this light blue shirt uh, raises a safety issue, subjectively, you get to detain me for that? That's what you presented, I never said that. I'm asking you that. If you no feel, way. let's say not you, let's say a police officer, not you, but a different officer. A different officer looks at my shirt and says, holy cow, that's not safe, I'm going to detain that man. Would that be a lawful detention or unlawful if it's based only on the shirt that I'm wearing? Is your shirt on fire? My shirt's not on fire. Okay. It looks exactly the way it looks right now. Well, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you're asking me to make a decision for another officer. I can only speak for me. Oh, so you can't answer that question? I just told you where I stand on that. So you can't answer the question, is that right? Correct. Okay. All right. So, since you don't want to answer that question, I'll ask you a different one. Well, that's is not what he said. Sure. He said, he said I, he no, can't answer. you said, he can't answer since for you don't officer. want to answer that question, he said, I can't answer. There's a yeah. difference. Well, right. right. Why is it you can't answer that question? I can't speak for that officer. Our interpretations may be different. Let's see if let's see if uh, if we can agree on anything. Is it lawful for a police officer to um, for completely unprovoked to just wake up one day and take out his gun and shoot somebody in the face, <coughs> or would that be illegal? Well, you said completely unprovoked, so no. Wait a second. You're answering for another officer. How can you do that? You're not a police officer. You just asked me a question. I asked you if another if a police officer wakes up one morning and decides to shoot somebody in the face unprovoked. Is that legal or illegal? Well, that's murder, so I know that. That would be illegal, right? Yeah, murder is illegal. Okay. Yes. But you're answering for another officer. How can you do that? Based on those extreme circumstances, yes, I can, I can speak for an officer in that case. Okay, let's, let's see if we can uh, speak for another officer in a different case, okay? Is an officer allowed to go and detain somebody for wearing a blue shirt, yes or no? Or are you unable to answer because you can't speak for that officer? If you put me in that situation, I, I didn't say you. Guys. No, I'm asking you to. I'm, I'm asking, I, I don't want to use you. Oh, well, I can't answer the question. You can't answer that? No. Okay, so my, I just, I want to make the record very, very clear here about this officer's training. You don't know if a police officer is allowed to detain somebody simply for wearing a blue shirt, nothing else. That's not what I said. That's what I'm asking you. Can you answer that question or not? I just told you. I'm talking about murder. You're talking about detention based on the color of a shirt. Right. Those are two different things. Okay, so and without explaining to me the difference between murder and a different color shirt, just answer my question, okay? My question is this. Is a police officer allowed to detain somebody for wearing a blue shirt? Based on the question that you're asking me, as vague as it is, no. Excellent. Okay, what if the officer says, I feel subjectively I personally believe that blue shirts present a safety problem. There's a safety concern with people wearing blue shirts. Now is he allowed to detain somebody for wearing a blue shirt? Object to the form, foundation, argumentative. Okay, your objection is noted. The question makes no sense to me. So you can't answer it? No, I can't. I okay. don't understand. What's wrong with the question? Where are you going with that? You're, no. you're talking about a blue shirt just on that basis? That's it. wearing a blue shirt? Nothing else. But the officer subjectively feels it's unsafe. I don't know why we feel unsafe. I can't speak for him. It's interpretation. Okay. Well, I can't speak for him either. I'm just... Is there any objective component to this, or is it strictly subjective, whatever's in the officer's mind? I don't understand your question. Do you know the difference between objective and subjective? Yes. What's the difference? Uh, one is, you know, kind of with prejudice, one is without. With prejudice and without? Yeah, one is basically, you know, I'll put it like this. You're confusing me in your question. I'll be more than willing to answer them, but I don't understand where you're going with this. Okay. What's the difference between objective and subjective? I'm confused at this point. Do you know what subjective means? I'm confused at this point, sir. Do you know what the word subjective means? I think I made it very clear. Yeah, well, asked him the answer. Asked him the answer. Yeah, no, he didn't answer. He, he said, said he's very confused. He is. Yeah, so that he doesn't, he doesn't know at this point. Oh, midnight shift. I'm confused and I'd like to get through this and help. Uh, this whole situation is as easy as possible. Okay, okay. I, I understand and you just made a record of this that you just worked a midnight shift. Are you unable to answer questions because you're too tired? No, I didn't say that. Okay, because if you are, we'll reschedule this. No, I didn't say that. Okay, so answer this question for me. Do you know what the word subjective means? I'm confused at this point. 
I'm just, I've said it several times. Do you know what the word objective means? I, I'm confused at this point. I've said it several times, sir. Do you know what the word handcuffs means? Yes, I do. Excellent. You're not confused about that word? No, I'm not. Great. Do you know what the word objective means? You don't know what the word objective means. Do you know what the word subjective means? So you don't know what the word subjective means either. I've answered this question several times. Move on, Mr. Radner. Okay, so just so we're very clear about this. We're clear. You've asked it you ten times. He's not going to answer it again. Well, don't no, answer no, it. Don't so answer you, it. You don't get to tell him not to answer Sure I do. He's my client. That. Yeah, absolutely I do. If you're going to sit here and harass him and ask the question over and over and over again, I'm going to exercise my right to say he's already answered I'm it. trying to get an answer. He's already given you his answer. Okay. If an officer believes that something is a safety concern, but there's no reasonable basis to believe that, is he allowed to detain somebody? You just said there's no reasonable basis for right. that. Right. So uh, could you rephrase your question? Which part of the question did you not The understand? entire question. OK, sure. Uh, you said, you know, let's just go back to my client here. You said that you felt that he posed a safety concern. Remember you said that? I do. What part of his actions, which action did he do that made you feel he posed a safety concern? When he did not put his hands behind his back, as he was instructed to do, and he offered resistance, at that point, that's where I felt there was a safety concern. Okay, so just so we're clear about it, you didn't feel that safety concern until after you decided to detain him, correct? Correct. Okay. So why were you detaining him? We were conducting an investigation. During the course of that investigation, his actions posed a safety concern to me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> at the time that you decided to detain him, uh, had you felt that he committed a crime? We were conducting an investigation. So can you answer the question or no? We were conducting an investigation. It wasn't complete. Okay, so that's another question you're not going to answer, right? I just gave you my answer. It wasn't complete. Okay, so did you or did you not feel that he committed a crime? It wasn't complete, sir. I don't know what that means. Okay, what that means is when we're conducting an investigation, we're ruling out things. If he was innocent, fine. If he wasn't, fine. But we were being thorough as we could be. So while you're conducting an investigation, you get to detain somebody? Is that, is if, that there's a, if there's a safety concern, yes, I will. Well, wait a second. The safety concern didn't happen until after you decided to detain him, right? And flow together. It what? They flow together. No, no, no. I asked you before chronologically what happened first. His, his resistance, which posed a safety concern, or your decision to detain him. Do you remember that question? You've asked several. You've confused me several times. Oh, well, you were confused sure you when you answered that too now. I'm sure you did, actually. I'm sure you did. I don't mean this in a rude way, but are you on any legal or illegal drugs right now that are affecting your no, ability to answer questions? Not at all. Okay, because you're very confused about a lot of my questions, right? Yes. Well, that's because your questions like, are very confusing. They're very confusing. Like, what does the word objective mean? Very confusing question, Audrey. I know. Okay, so let's, let's try to figure this out. Chronologically, I asked you what happened first, your decision to detain my client or his resistance. Do you remember that question? Okay, here's the thing. Do you, yes or no, do you remember that question? I'm not going to answer that question. Why not? Because I want to let you know where I'm coming from. You've asked I, me I don't want to hear where you're coming from. from. I want you to well, answer my answers questions. For you. You've asked me several questions. Yeah. I'm not going to give a separate answer now than what I told you earlier. You've confused me, so Great. I don't want to go back on what I said. Okay, so earlier... So everything is on record. So. Excellent. So earlier when I asked you, mm -hmm. I asked you what happened first, your decision to detain or his resistance? And your answer was your decision to detain. Do you remember that or not? It sounds like you have the answer. Do you remember that or not? He just wants to know if you recall that testimony. Could you ask the question again? Sure. I asked you before, maybe five minutes ago, what came first, your decision to detain my client or his resistance? The decision to detain. Excellent. And I asked you what safety concern, what did he do that raised you, that raised the safety concern? Do you remember that question? Yes. And your answer was his resistance, right? Yes. Okay, so just so we're very clear about this, your decision to detain him came before he posed a safety concern, right? Yes. Excellent. Why did you have the legal right to detain my client? Do Why you know? Do I have the legal right to detain your client? Yes. Well, there's an investigation going on. I came in midway through it. 
So just so we're very, I'm sorry, did I, did I cut you off? You did. Okay, please finish. Okay, there was an investigation going on. I came in midway through it. I addressed the safety concerns. Okay. The detention happened before I got there. Okay, so which decision happened? The detention. Oh, so you didn't detain him, somebody else did? Yes. Who detained him? Uh, several officers that are here. Did you ever ask what crime had been committed? No. Okay, now do you know how long have you been a police officer? 12 years. 12 years. What did you do before that? I was a student. A student where? At uh, Wayne County Community College. So what were you studying? Criminal justice. Oh, so criminal justice student, you majored? Yes. Okay, so you majored in criminal justice, and now you've been a police officer for 12 years. All 12 years at Romulus? No. Where were you before? In Detroit Police Department. How long were you in Detroit? Five years. Okay, and then you've been at Romulus for seven? Correct. Excellent. So 12 years as a police officer, I imagine you probably had a lot of training in the last 12 years? Oh, uh, yes. Did anybody at any point in time tell you when you are and are not allowed to detain somebody? Yeah. And what's the general principle on when you're allowed to detain somebody? When you have reasonable suspicion. Excellent. So if you're conducting an investigation, because that's the term that you kept using, conducting an investigation, is that enough or do you need reasonable suspicion? When to I'm detain somebody? You need reasonable suspicion. Okay. So what reasonable suspicion was there to believe that my client committed a crime when you made the decision to detain him? Well, I'm going to object to the form and to the foundation. He's already testified he was not the first officers on the scene and that Mr. Norris had already been detained. So that decision that's has fine. already been made. Okay. And if his answer is, I had none but another officer did, that's fine. Okay. I came in, made way through the investigation. He had already been detained. Okay. That. Okay. And why is it that you decided to put him in handcuffs? Because I was standing right there when I saw the safety issue. And the safety issue was he resisted your attempt to put him in handcuffs? No, he resisted commands. He didn't follow those commands. Oh, okay. Which commands? <clears throat> to place his hands behind his back. Okay. Isn't that for purposes of handcuffing him? Yes, it is. And uh, the basis to put him in handcuffs, well, let's just make sure I understand this. When you were putting somebody in handcuffs, that is a detention, right? Or is it not? I don't understand your question. Okay. Do you know, do you know that detention is... You don't necessarily need to place someone in handcuffs to detain them. No, I know that. Do, do I'm know answering that? your question. I'm not answering your questions. Do you know that detention is the noun for detain? Yes. Okay. So when you put him in handcuffs, that was a detention, right? No. It wasn't? No. It was to make sure that the scene stayed safe. Oh. That's why I placed him in the handcuffs. Okay. And did you have any reasonable suspicion, you yourself, I'm not asking about other officers, did you have any reasonable suspicion that he had committed a crime? No, I didn't witness it, no. Okay. You, uh, earlier you said something about interfering. Remember that? I don't remember saying that. You never said the word interfere? I don't remember saying that. Because I asked you to describe what he did wrong, and you said his actions interfere, and he was trying to enter a police station. You don't remember saying that? I don't remember saying that. <laughs> okay. Do you remember saying any of those things? I think things? you're dreaming that, uh, Mr. Radner. Well, it's a good thing we have a transcript then. You don't remember saying that he was trying to enter a police station of some sort? No, I no. didn't say that. You didn't say that? No. Because that wasn't true. I didn't say that. Right. And the reason you didn't say that is because it wouldn't be true, right? Check the foundation. foundation. I didn't ask you if you it said it. wasn't there. What I asked you was the reason you didn't say that is that it wouldn't be true. I think right? me saying, telling you that I didn't say it kind of solves it, handles that. I didn't okay. say it. Let me ask you this. Was he interfering? Interfering with what? Uh, with anything. I never said he was, so I can't answer that question. Okay. Well, was he interfering or not? I never said he was. I didn't so say I you did. Now I'm taking that back. Did, was he interfering though? I never said he was. I didn't ask you if you said he was, did I? I never said he was, so I can't answer the question. Are you wearing a yellow shirt? No. You never said you were wearing a yellow shirt though, right? I think you know the colors though. So you just mentioned a blue shirt. But you, can still, one. but you can still answer the question, right? Whether you said it or not, you can still answer the question. I have knowledge of it, yes. We can't talk over each other. No, I have knowledge of what I'm wearing, yes. My, my point is, whether you said it or not, you can still answer the simple question of what color shirt you're wearing, right? Correct. Okay, great. Was my client interfering or not? Interfering with what? I never said he was. Interfering with what? With when? anything. It was his word. I know he's denying he ever said the word interfere, 
but the transcript will say something else. So I'm just trying to make sure you, I understand. Give him a time frame. When, what do you want to know? He said it. I have no idea. That's why I'm asking him. And now he's denying he ever said it. That's your answer. Okay, great. So now the question is, did my client at any point in time unlawfully interfere with a police investigation? Objective foundation. Let me, let me rephrase that question. At any point in time, did my client interfere with a police investigation? Objective foundation. <clears throat> I never said it did. I didn't ask you if you said it did, did I? I'm telling you, I never said it did. Okay, great. So can you answer my question, if he did or not? I don't know, because I never said he did. Okay, great. Did he ever interfere with the police, yes or no? He said, I don't know. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. He said he never his said that. His first three words out of his mouth were, no. I don't know. Okay, let's just... Do you know if he interfered with a police investigation? No, he, he... I don't know. You don't know if he interfered with a police investigation? I know he was a part of one. I don't know if he interfered with... Okay, great. Uh, what about entering a police station? Was there anything that he was doing as far as trying to enter a police station? I don't have any knowledge of that. No, no knowledge of that at all? Okay, he wasn't trying to access an area that he was not allowed to access, right? Objective foundation. He already said he doesn't know. You're just trying to rework your no, words no, to not. get him to say something different. <coughs> no, you'll, you'll see where I'm going with this yeah. in just a second. I know where you're going. Okay. Was he trying to access a place that he was not allowed to access? Objective foundation. If you know. Do you know? No. Okay. Was he attempting to gain access or access information to a secured area? Could you, could you, I don't yeah. know what you mean by a secured area. Was he attempting to gain access to a secured area? I don't know. Was he attempting to access information in a secured area? I don't know. Do you know what interrogatories are? Um, I'm a little confused on it. Could you explain to me what it is? Written questions and answers. Okay. Do you remember getting these? Yes, I do. Oh, excellent. They're stickers. I'm going to mark as Exhibit 1. Defendant Hathorne's answers to plaintiff's first set of interrogatories and requests to produce. <clears throat> and attached to it is a single page police report. I have over here interrogatories. I'm going to flip it to page 10, which shows interrogatory 21, but feel free to look through that document if you want. Have you ever seen these questions before? Do you have a specific question you want to look at, number 21? Is no, I just asked him if he's ever seen this document before. This, this doesn't seem like what I can do. I'm sorry, the question was, did you ever see that document before? No. no okay. this did you ever uh, answer those questions? I did, but these are, these are my answers. Oh, all right. Can you look at the answer to question 21 and uh, just read it to yourself? Okay. I'm going to ask you to highlight the parts of that answer that you know are true. So when it says defendant down there, is that me? That's your answer, yes. Yeah. So I'm asking you the bold part there. I'm asking you to highlight any part of that answer that you know is true. If you don't know or if you think it's false, don't highlight it. Okay, so you've highlighted no part of this. Correct? Correct. You had a report as well, didn't you? Yes. The report is the last page of Exhibit 1. I see you have a copy of it in front of you as well, do you not? I do. Okay. Uh, when's the last time you looked through this report? Just prior to this uh, deposition started. Today or yesterday or the day before? Today. Okay. Is any part of this report not true? No, it's not true. Okay. So what came over the radio was an unknown subject taking photos of police property, right? Yes. Is that illegal? No. Oh. Do you know who wrote the ticket for uh, Mr. Norris? I will. And in order to write a ticket, what do you have to have? When you say, what do I have to have, what do you mean? Well, you have to believe that he committed a crime, right? Yes. Okay, and the crime that you believed he committed was what? Loitering and disorderly conduct. All right. Did you cite him for a state code or a, uh, a local ordinance? Do you have a copy of the citation? Sure. And I'm going to mark that as Exhibit 2. I'll hand you a copy of the citation. I 
That's a local ordinance. Thank you. And what ordinance is it? Loitering and disorderly conduct. Okay. And what specifically did you believe he did that constituted loitering and disorderly conduct? His actions during the detention. Right. I'm asking you specifically. What action did he do that made you believe he committed loitering and disorderly conduct? Well, he's very, like I said, very evasive. Okay. Um, he was standing in the way of Detective Harkins entering the police station. Oh, okay. Is that illegal? I'm sorry? Is that illegal? To stand in the way of someone entering the police station? Was he on a public sidewalk? I don't know where he was. I didn't see him. So. Isn't that important to know? This ticket was, I would issue the ticket at the direction of the director of sentence. Oh, okay, fine. So that's that's all I needed to hear. So what I'm asking you is, if you personally believed he committed a crime, or if you observed him commit a crime, or if you wrote the ticket because somebody else supposedly observed him commit a crime and told you to. Can, we go, can we go question by question? Sure. Give me answer by answer. Yeah, well, what I'm asking you is, did you write this ticket because you personally observed him commit a crime or because somebody else told you he committed a crime? I was directed to issue the citation. Okay. Did Settles tell you whether or not he believed my client actually committed a crime? He didn't say that. Did you ask him? No. Did you ask him what my client did wrong that constituted a criminal action no. punishable by jail time? No. What happened after you wrote the ticket? What do you mean, what happened? Did you let him go? Did I let him go? Did anybody let him go? Yes, he, he, he was never arrested. How long was he in handcuffs for? I don't know how long he was in handcuffs. Was he ever placed in the back of a police car? I believe he was. That's not an arrest in your opinion? No, it's not. Why not? Because he was let go. He, didn't, he never went into the station as a prisoner. Oh, so the definition of arrest is being taken to the station as a prisoner? He was cited in the Did you hear my question? Could you ask it again? What's the definition of arrest? What's the, de what's the definition of an arrest? Yeah, that's and fine. Someone is brought into police custody. Okay, and uh, when he's in handcuffs in the back of a police car, he's not in police custody? I don't say that. Okay, well you said he wasn't under arrest. And then you defined arrest as being in police custody. He wasn't under arrest. <coughs> what is the definition of arrest? I just gave you that answer. Right, you said being in police custody. I just gave you that answer. What was the answer? I forgot. Okay, well, this on the record. I just gave you the answer. What was the answer? I just gave you the answer, sir. Okay, if I recall your answer correctly, it was being in police custody. It just sounds like you know the answer. Okay. Was my client in police custody? Yes. So, what my word. Once he was oh. cited, then he was released so from police custody. Was he temporarily arrested? No, he wasn't temporarily arrested. Okay, but he was temporarily in police custody, right? He was detained. Right, but he was temporarily in police custody, right? Yes. Okay, and according to your definition of arrest, being in police custody is being under arrest, right? That's not what I said. That's not what you said? Okay, what did you say? I must have misunderstood. I just gave you the answer, sir. Right, you said that being in police custody is being under arrest. You don't remember saying that? I just gave you the answer. Do you remember saying that or not? No, I don't remember saying that. Okay, so what's the definition of arrest? Asked and answered. You don't need to answer it again. Come you on, Solomon. You're, you're, just, answer you're playing these games I'm over and over. He, he told you. He keeps changing his mind. No, he doesn't. Sure he does. Move on. Come on. He's changed his mind a bunch what of What happened times. to that promise since you were you know, nearly a half an hour late that you were going to move these along and we keep having the same questions over and over and over and over? I was maybe 15 minutes late. Oh, come on. And I got a great excuse for that. I left my house late. Yeah. <laughs> We're not impressed. <coughs> All right. <clears throat> Section 36170, loitering and disorderly conduct. That's what you wrote my client this ticket for, right? Yeah, that's what yeah. No person shall loiter in a public building or on a public street, sidewalk, or parking lot or any premises or other public area or places open to the public in such a manner as to, by words or conduct, harass, assault, molest, or intimidate any person, any other person. Was my client, with words or conduct, harassing, assaulting, molesting, or intimidating any other person, yes or no? Object to the foundation, as he's already explained to you, he was directed 
to issue the citation by Director Settles, and he was not present for the entire encounter. His answer can be, I don't know. Well, you said yes or no. So okay. I'm yes, no, or I don't know. Could you ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Did my client at any time, at any time, by words or conduct, harass, assault, molest, or intimidate any other person? Same objection. No. Did my client at any time interfere with any person's use of said public building, street, sidewalks, parking lot, public places, or places open to the general public after having been requested to ce cease such interference by a peace officer? Same objection. Yes, no, or I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Did my client create a reasonable belief that a breach of the peace is imminent or a reasonable concern for the safety of persons or pre Well, you have it in front of you, don't you? Yeah, I have it. You're reading along with me. Read through three and tell me if uh, yes, no, or I don't know to whether my client did that to subsection three. Subsection three? Yeah. A all the way through four? Yeah. Based on what I'm seeing here, A applies and 4 applies. Okay. What part of A? There's four subparts of A. Part of A, uh, we're going to say a reasonable concern for the safety of persons. At that point, that person was me. I felt he needed to be placed in the handcuffs. That's why I placed him in the handcuffs. I didn't know how this uh, situation how it could escalate. And then we go down to number four. Um, Wait, you were looking at, at one? I'm sorry? Which one was it? A, there's one through four. I just explained A. Which one? A has four subparts, do you see that? If you hear me out, I'll explain number four. That's the one that I said. Number about. four. <clears throat> the person is one of a group which is blocking the free passage of pedestrians or vehicular travel on a street, sidewalk, or parking lot? Yes. That's what he was doing. Yes. There was a group of people there. A group. What do you mean a group? A group with him or just a group of people in terms of law enforcement? Do you, do you There's a group of people in terms of law enforcement, yes. Read subsection 4, please, out loud. The person is one of a group, which okay, is why... Okay, See the word group? Yes. Was there a group there? No. Okay, so how could he have been violating subsection 4? Okay, he wasn't part of a group. Great, okay. What part of A did he violate? I just explained that. Number four. A number four, is that what you're asking me to explain? I, what part of I'm, subsection? I'm trying to get, understand, make sure I ask you I question. thought you said that he violated subsection four, didn't you? And right under A. Towards the bottom of A. Right. Reasonable concern for the safety of persons. At that point, I just told you that person was me. That's why he's placing the handcuffs. Then I went down to number four. Wait, wait, stop. Reasonable concern for the person, where is that? He's reading from subsection A, where it states a reasonable concern for the safety of oh, persons. Oh, a reasonable concern for the safety of persons or property are the following. So doesn't it have to be somewhere from one through four? Well, a is a part you're of asking him, first of all, you're, I'm going to object to foundation. You're asking him for a legal conclusion. And if you read the complete section, starting section A, it says, among the circumstances which may be considered. It doesn't say these are all the reasons or the only reasons. It says among the circumstances. Okay, and so just so we're clear about this, you didn't only get this belief that he committed a crime from subtles. You actually witnessed my client commit a crime, right? Well, he committed this violation by resisting you, didn't he? What do you mean? He can, he, what do you mean? Yeah, well, what we're doing is we're looking through this statute here, this ordinance, okay. and you just described a crime that my client committed to you, didn't you? Yeah, I said Great. safety. Okay, that was, that was, so yeah. you witnessed him commit a crime? Yes. So why are you blaming the chief for writing the ticket? Well, I didn't blame him for writing the ticket. Okay, so let me ask you this again. You personally observed my client commit a crime, right? If we're going by this right here, yeah. then yes. Okay, great. And that crime happens to be the, t the crime that's cited in your ticket, right? No. Okay. This, and the ticket is 36178. Correct. I'll take that. Yes, correct. You okay. are correct in that question. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, at any point in time, did you uh, talk to the chief about this uh, incident? At any time after the not arrest, but detention and custody and ticket being issued? Did you discuss this with the chief? Do you have city email? Yes, I do. What is your city email address? A half one at romulusgov.com. Okay. Do you ever send any emails from that email address? I do. Do you ever receive any emails? I do. Did you ever send or receive any emails that have my client's name in it? Yes. Okay. Uh, any that did not include your attorney? No. Okay. So every single email ever sent or received from your city email address included your attorney? Regarding with regard to, with Mr. regard to Mr. Norris, yes. Thank you. Regarding this matter, yes. Okay. So you never emailed the chief about this incident prior to being sued? No. Okay. Did you ever discuss this incident with the chief prior to being sued? He already said he doesn't recall. Exactly. I don't recall discussing this with him. You watched the video of the arrest, didn't you? I'm sorry, of the detainment. I watched the video of this incident. Okay. There's more than one video. Did you watch them all? I saw two. I don't Were know they about all. Body cameras or my client's video? I saw two. Body cameras or my client's video? I saw two. You do you recall which ones you saw? Yes, I saw your client's video. Great. That's an answer to the question. Thank you I'm for answering. answering your question. Okay. Um, did you see a crime committed on the video? Yeah, I see a crime committed on the video. Yes. Not based on what I saw. If you would have seen that video and the chief would have told you to write the ticket, would you have written the ticket? After seeing that video? Yeah. Uh, I would have asked them what, what crime was committed because the video didn't seem all inclusive. So I would have had to ask a few more questions. So based on what you saw in the video, just so we're very clear about this, you did not see my client commit a crime? Not in the video. Have you ever asked the chief what crime my client committed? No. Aren't you curious? No. You're getting sued for it. You never asked him about it? No. If I understand your testimony correctly, your entire basis for issuing the ticket was that the chief told you to. Is that right? My entire basis? Entire basis. I wrote this ticket because he told me so. I didn't say my entire basis was that. Okay. What other basis was there to write the ticket? The ticket was wrote on what he told me. I haven't looked at the entire basis on which I wrote the ticket. Okay. Why else did you write the ticket? I just told you why. He told me to write the ticket. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, in hindsight, did my client commit a crime? Objective foundation. He wasn't there. Yeah, but now you saw the video. He said it wasn't all inclusive. It did not seem to be all inclusive. You're asking him to speculate on an event when he wasn't there. I'm not asking him to speculate. Sure you are. I think he knows the answer. That's my interpretation of it. Is Settle still your chief? Yes, he is. Are you afraid to testify right now that he told you to do something illegal because you're afraid he might retaliate against you? Nope. Okay. So if you feel that it was an unlawful order to unlawfully cite my client, you would say so, right? Yes. Was it an unlawful order to unlawfully cite my client? Object to foundation and to form. Assumes facts, not into evidence. Let me break that down. Was it an unlawful order to cite my client? Object to foundation. Yes, no, it wasn't I don't know. there. I don't understand your question. Was it? Was it a lawful order for Settles to tell you to issue my client a citation? Object yes, to foundation. Yes, no, or I can't answer. It was an order. I understand that. Okay. Was it a lawful order? Objective foundation. He's already testified. He wasn't there. He hadn't seen the video at the time. Doesn't have a basis to have an opinion. And the answer can be, I don't know. Was it a lawful order? To yes, order? it was lawful. It was lawful. Mm -hmm. okay. So that means that there was reasonable suspicion. Actually, at that point, probable cause. Because he was being charged with a crime, right? That requires probable cause, do you know? Yes. Okay. So your testimony is there was probable cause to charge him with a crime, right? Yes. 
And what crime was that? Loitering in his order of conduct. Right. And what specifically did he do that violated that order? Because before, you know, Andrew, before you object, before he didn't know, he just did it because the chief told him to. Now he testified affirmatively it was a lawful order because my client had committed a crime. So now I get to ask him about this. I will what object to foundation. That's fair enough. What specific action did my client do that constituted a crime? And asked an answer. Go ahead, one more time. I was uh, given directives by Chief Settles to issue this citation. Okay. When I, and you said that you know for a fact, because you answered yes, you know that that was a lawful order, right? Yes. Okay, so what I'm asking you is, what did my client do that constituted a crime? And I don't want to hear about what the chief said. I want to hear about what my client did. Well, I just told you what I did, so that's the answer that I have to give you. I don't want to hear what you did either. I want to hear what my client did. So you're asking me what I did? You're asking me no. about the ticket that I No, I'm not. Okay. I asked you a very simple question. What action did my client I do you, I was, that constituted I was told a crime? Okay. If you don't know what his actions were, just say you don't know. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Great. Is there anything that, 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 that's going to change your answer when we get to trial? Or is that going to be your answer at trial? It's going to be my answer at trial. Uh, your name, please? Jason Orm. You know what we're here to talk about? I do. What is that? Uh, the lawsuit your client has against the city of the Police Department. All right. If I get a judgment against you, who's going to pay it? Check the foundation, if you know. I don't know. I would sue the city. You, don't, you, don't, you never asked anybody? Have you ever been sued before? No, sir. Has any other officers mm -hmm. been sued before? Check the foundation. If you know. I would assume so I mean, over the years. I don't know of any personal. At no point in time did you ever ask anybody who pays this lawsuit if, uh, <laughs> if I win? Who's paying for your attorney? The city. Okay. Do you have to sign a contract of some sort allowing Ms. Forbush to represent you? Um, With the city? I don't believe so. I don't, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think so. You know if there's an insurance company involved? I don't know, sir. No idea at all? <coughs> Never asked anybody? All right. Did my client commit a crime? Check the foundation. After looking at the video? No. Okay. Was my client attempting to gain access to a secured area? Not to my knowledge, but I arrived very late, I guess, on the, on the scene that day. Okay, I'm going to hand you what's been marked as Exhibit 3. Okay. These are interrogatory responses. <laughs> And your report is attached to the end of it. I'm going to hand you the report. I mean, I'm again handing you, uh, I want you to look at the answer to question number 21, interrogatory 21. And I want you to take my highlighter. And you see the bold part on the bottom there, which is the answer? I want you to highlight any part of that answer that you know is true. So if you're unsure or if you think it's not true, don't do anything. But if you know there's something there that's true, highlight it. I didn't see your client do any of that. I didn't see him try to gain access. Or... Okay. So you highlighted nothing, correct? Is that right? Correct. Okay. When's the last time you read your report that you wrote? Yesterday. Is any part of it not true? May I look over it again? Sure. Oh, you have it. Yes. Here. You can look at, ex okay. at exhibit number three. It's the last page. Your role in this was pretty minimal, wasn't it? Yes, sir. All right. Um, after reviewing the video that you reviewed, uh, you didn't see anything that gave you any sort of reasonable belief that my client had committed a crime. Is that right? Correct. I don't have anything further. Thank you. After having had a chance to watch the video that you've watched, any reason to believe my client committed a crime? After watching that video, I would say no. Okay. Well, he was my client was charged with a crime. You know that, right? I, I do know that. Okay. Did the prosecutor ever reach out to you to discuss the case? I spoke with the prosecutor. Yes. Did you tell the prosecutor that you saw the video and that you believed that there was no basis to charge my client with a crime? No. Okay. Prior to the prosecutor talking to you, had you seen the video? No, I don't believe I did. Okay. 
based on what you saw on the video, your your testimony is you don't believe there was anything that my client did that was criminal. Is that right? Based on the video, yes. Right, okay. Not me in person. I mean, he was blocking where I couldn't get to the keypad. Okay, so that's is that a crime? If he's interfering with me getting into the gate, interfering. Okay. How is he blocking? Standing in the way. Standing in the way of the keypad? Standing in the way of me getting to the keypad. Where was he standing? Um, in the driveway where I needed to get to the keypad. How close to the keypad was he? Um, I don't know, a few feet. A few feet? Away from the keypad. So what I want to know from you is this crime of interference, what was the first time you ever said to another person that you believed my client committed the crime of interference? Is that today? First time I said it to a person? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's, yeah, okay. today. Do you know what the elements of interference are? Offhand, no. I mean, I could say what happened. I mean, I couldn't get through. He was blocking the, the, the entrance. I mean, I mean, you know what elements are, right? Yes. Our crimes are made up of elements. Yes. I don't know offhand. No. You've probably been in jury trials before in criminal yes. cases. Yes. Judges say that in every case. Crimes are made up of elements. Yes. Okay, so what elements make up the crime of interference? She just said she didn't know. Where would I look to know the answer to that? I don't know. I'm not sure. So you're not sure what the elements are, you're not sure where to look to know what the elements are, and you're not sure if it's a state crime or a local ordinance, Correct. but you're sure that it's a crime. Right? I don't know if it's a crime or not. I mean, he interfered with me getting into the back gate. So besides for this crime of interference, from what you saw in the video, was there any reason to believe that my client committed disorderly conduct or loitering? No, I don't know. Okay. All right, I don't have anything further.